So today I'm looking at ChatGPT, which was just released in the last couple of days and I've been trying it out and it's really impressive what you can do with it. I'll go through some examples. Some of the suggestions it makes like coding questions, questions about quantum computing, or you could ask about physics, ideas for a birthday, definitely very good at generating content that you might use for blog posts and so on, summarizing articles. But let's try something. So not so long ago, I was programming a pivot table in uh, Ruby and actually uh, TypeScript and there was very little out there about that. So maybe I give that a go. So can I have code for a pivot table in TypeScript? Okay, lining up some data. Hmm. That's a bit sketchy. I haven't got the implementation. Okay. It's a bit more like it. Right, so now we get the implementation of actually how it gets the row combinations. And at a glance, I can see that it is a simplistic way to do it. It's going to get you the result in a basic way, but not if you want to pivot more deeply. Still not a bad start. About as good as some blog posts that I found on the topic at the time, at a glance anyway. And another thing I did with that work was actually showing that data using D3, which there's definitely no blog post for, so didn't even put a question mark there. Doesn't seem to mind. Okay, it's got the same data. That's kind of interesting. It's gone with a table. Hmm. Right, again though, it's just said that you have a pivot table, but there's no such thing. So again, Strange. Okay, so now back to just the TypeScript. But I guess that's what it's referring to. So it keeps the context between the two requests. Okay. And then it's hard to tell if they make it type out just like that, just for show. I think it's a combination of it actually taking a while and for show. So something else, just something you might search for, like can I have a bootstrap partial for Rails validation error messages? Very standard, but you could grab this and go. It's even going as far as to show how you would use it. Say you switch to Tailwind. Makes sense. But this is all really standard stuff you could find in blog posts, Stack Overflow, documentation out there. But where this can get quite curious is that you can ask for, you can make bizarre requests like that, but in the form of a sea shanty. It's fine with that. It's just going to make it. But how's it going to interpret this? <laughs> A C shanty version of this partial might look something like this. This partial uses C shanty inspired language and imagery to convey the same information as the previous example. So, <laughs> so it's got the errors. So this many errors put this type in the brig. Okay, there's not so much, there's not much, can, so can you add more C shanty inspired language? I mean, it's just ridiculous, of course, but. <laughs> so certain number of errors 
scuttled this object before it could set sail. Okay, so it's quite kind of incredible that it understands the request to some degree and is explaining it in detail. And I should stop asking for sea shanty related things. Otherwise, some things that I saw people doing today, like uh, generating poetry. Somebody asked for, you know, can I have a poem about a dog called Newton with a happy ending? Because the one I saw earlier today was a decidedly sad poem. Yeah, that's much happier. Newton was a clever pup with a nose that never gave up. He wandered far and wide in search of something to abide. Hmm, not great, but I think what this is really good for is starting points. Whatever you're working on, it's a bit like if you're using GitHub Copilot, then there it often makes suggestions that are a reasonable start that you can edit, but usually have some kind of problem, something subtle in the implementation if it is complex. So yeah, an example of that may be if ask for, can I have an implementation of a, let's see, recursive deep neural network. There is no chance that in, what is it, 10,000 tokens, it's going to be able to do something that well, I suppose now it's actually just, it's using uh, Keras, so actually it's going to be fine. If it was going to implement without libraries, then it's going to have trouble. So can it be implemented without any libraries? So just Python and NumPy, I suppose. I mean, that's a library, but you're going to allow it. Here, I suppose it's just going to go for a very standard implementation. So again, not really a problem. So haven't managed to trip it up, but here's one that will fail. So, so can I have code for a CRDT in Ruby that operates strings? Okay, so you can append, delete, and merge. So it's run out of tokens to actually implement this, but so far today, all the implementations I've seen of these CRDTs have not actually resulted in the right answer, even if the example text makes very clear that this is what you would get, like it's uh, showed an example of merging hello and world from two different users. And the result was always incorrect, although the explanation given always said that the implementation was correct. So the output didn't actually match what you'd get if you ran the code. Still, it can be a useful thing to ask questions of. So what I'm thinking I will be using this for is to replace some searches that would otherwise be on Google or DuckDuckGo. I would actually try here and see what I get, like for example, just to get some thoughts on something. So give something that if you put this into Google, normally you don't write in the form of questions in Google searches, but here, let's see what it's come up with. Okay, so using a more complex model, adjusting the decision threshold, using a different evaluation metric, and then it mentions F1 score and data augmentation. So these are giving really good jumping off points for searches, but then you don't necessarily need to leave here. So let's say we're interested in the F1 score, then you could go off to Wikipedia and look at it. But here, hmm, okay, it's actually giving some examples about true positive, false positive, and so on and giving the calculation, I like this. So if I had a particular question about what it has said, then I will be able to ask a question of it to go deeper. And then once I have made some notes, I can take this to uh, searches on Google, Wikipedia, etc., and confirm if there have been any mistakes. On the whole though, I think this is an amazing tool and 
seems to be something that is sparking a lot of interesting discussion about the use of this kind of technology. Where I find this most interesting right now anyway is hearing cases of things like people who struggle with communication being able to use the tool to take a rough prompt, something that is not the way they want it to be, and then GPT can spin it out into something that's more appropriate for what they're trying to do. Like I read uh, one story of somebody who they wanted to start out as a freelancer and they needed to send professional emails, but it's something they struggled with. And somebody else made a GPT based tool where they can email the most bare sentence to it and it will reply with a fully formed email that that person can then send to their client, which I think is a very impressive and solid use of this technology. So let me know in the comments if you create anything interesting, especially sea shanty related or just ridiculous. And I look forward to seeing how this progresses.